As more people are talking about going green, the organic food movement is becoming a growing phenomenon. And as Laura Rencon shows us, going organic is more than a healthy lifestyle. Organic food is more popular than ever. Big businesses are now marketing natural lines, and Burger King recently announced it's going to start using humanely raised eggs and pork. Brad Horn has worked on three organic farms and always tries to consider future generations when purchasing food. What's his take on the trend? Because it is so popular right now um, for people to be have awareness of some of these issues, um, there's a lot of money to be made. So there's a lot of incentive for people to, to sell food with the word organic on the label. In a town such as Carborough, it's easy to eat organic. You can dine at Acme and buy your groceries at Weaver Street. But if you're a student at UNC, Carolina Dining Services might not provide these same options. It turns out that most of the fruit is purchased locally when it's in season, and 70 to 80 percent of the dairy products are purchased from farms in North Carolina and Virginia. Local is great, but how about organic? Director of Auxiliary Services Mike Freeman says it's just too expensive. For a meal plan, it would, it would be a significantly cost increase if I went strictly organic. Freeman says this would raise costs by about 20 percent. And although buying local is a start, Horn thinks it's about priorities. The priorities of the school were to, you know, fund and purchase local, organic, some sort of ethically created food. I have no doubt in my mind it would be able to do so. So why be environmentally and socially conscious about food? Society as a whole can, can go on not prioritizing um, the planet on which we live, but there are going to be serious problems for that. With, there will be consequences. In Chapel Hill, I'm Laura Rincon for Carolina Week. To find out how you can help protect the environment and the rights of all workers, visit our website at carolinaweek.org. Remember when you could pick up your milk fresh from the local dairy? Reporter Sarah Huffman says you still can. Along Dairyland Road, houses dissolve into rolling pastures dotted with livestock. This is the home of Mapleview Dairy, a tradition based on five generations. Bob Nutter is the son of the original Mapleview founder, who began his milking business in Maine. Nutter owned his first cow when he was six years old, and is dedicated to the satisfaction of the consumer. And it gives you kind of a feeling if you're up on a cold morning milking cows that some kid is going to, that they're going to like that milk that you, <laughs> that you get for them. <laughs> the milk is only sold within a 50 mile radius, but those 50 miles keep asking for more. I think it is. I, I think the community has given us a lot of support in our, in our, in our local products because uh, if they didn't, they wouldn't be buying them. In the As a local product, Mapleview Milk has become a part of the community. But you don't have to come all the way here to the barn to get your fresh milk. You can get it right at your local grocery store. Like here at Weaver Street Market. Weaver Street is a strong supporter of local products, including Mapleview Milk and Mapleview Ice Cream. Kat Molesky, who works with public relations for Weaver Street, is extremely complimentary of the Mapleview family. The product that they produce is incredible. They watch over the quality from the beginning to the end. The milk is just fabulous and the ice cream is great. The cows don't have a lot to say. They let the milk speak for itself. In Hillsboro, I'm Sarah Huffman, Carolina Week. To find out all the places you can get Mapleview products, visit our website at carolinaweek.org. One person's junk is becoming another person's way to improve the environment. Behind a narrow alley off Rosemary Street, you can find used books and new bikes. The Carolina Blue Bikes are part of a program operated by the group Students United for a Responsible Global Environment, or SURGE. The group rebuilds bikes with scrap parts at the recyclery in Carborough. For 10 bucks a year, you can rent bikes from the Skylight Exchange or Three Cups Coffee House to use as an alternative to cars. Surge hopes its bike program will help put the brakes on carbon emissions. This spring, a free health clinic in Carborough begins its 40th year serving local residents. Many of them wouldn't be able to get medical care without the clinic. Health reporter Alex Argeroff has more. The Student Health Action Coalition Clinic offers health care to those who can't afford it. UNC graduate student Anna McCullough says more than three quarters of patients who visit the student-run clinic have no health insurance. We serve an unbelievable number of people every year who just don't have anywhere else to go. 
UNC students and supervising doctors see patients every Wednesday night at the Carborough Community Health Center off East Main Street. The clinic staff saw 1,100 patients last year and more than 40% needed Spanish interpreters. We do see a lot of families who are very newly arrived to the U.S. and this is their first encounter with the health, health system in America. McCullough says clinic staffers never ask if a person is a U.S. citizen. She believes, however, some patients are illegal immigrants. Second year medical student Laura Boschini has volunteered as a Spanish interpreter and healthcare provider for the past three years. There's a lot of really great people that volunteer in all capacities and you get to spend time with people from other schools of health sciences. Pharmacy and medical students work with doctors to prescribe medications. Here at Sutton's Drugstore, patients come to get their prescriptions filled. Sutton's bills the clinic directly, costing the patients nothing. Donations make this all possible. In Chapel Hill, I'm Alex Argeroff, Carolina Week. To find out more about the free clinic, visit our website at www.carolinaweek.org. And now we're joined by weathercaster Jonathan O. Howdy. Hey, Johnny O. So I've been loving this warm weather. I'm sure you have. Uh, however, I think we're going to have some bad news for you this coming weekend. I know that we've seen summer-like temperatures for the past few days, and everyone is having fun in the snow, including this guy who knows how to play my sport. But will low temperatures make Easter weekend seem more like winter? I'll let you know after the break. 